Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 20 Live today. It's uh, Saturday, August the 3rd, 2013. Our special guest today is our one and only Kim Case, and the topic for today is cell phones as instructional tools. Peggy George is our, along with uh, Lori Moffat and Tammy Moore, are part of our team for presenting our shows. Peggy is on her way home from North Carolina, so she won't be uh, with us today. Okay. In spirit, always, but um, just to give you a heads up, the rest of the team will be working very hard to fill her shoes, but it is very difficult to do that. So I'm asking the people who are regulars in the chat, please help that conversation keep going between the other participants. I don't type well. I will be trying to drop in as many links as I can during the session, but uh, we will dearly miss Peggy. For those of you who are on an iPad, and I see uh, Dottie maybe is there, just to give you a heads up that not everything works the same on the iPad as it does on your uh, laptop or your uh, tower. It uh, is a new app and it, it does help with the presentation, but it doesn't give you all the options. I don't think we can do the whiteboard, but you certainly can do the poll questions. So here's your presenters again, uh, Peggy, Kim, myself, Lorna. Tammy, who provides this closed captioning in the uh, chat for people with uh, hearing difficulties, or if your English is not your first language, then we uh, tremendously appreciate her support. And Lori will be doing the backup with questions today, and she's always there for us when we can't be. To those of you new to the show, we use something like called a live binder, and it is a terrific resource. All the uh, items that Kim is going to be sharing with you today are in this live binder, and I'll be using that to drop links into the chat, which I can't do right now. I can't give you that link. The link's on the screen. Don't worry. I'll get it in a minute. You can't click on a, a link on, on the whiteboard. It doesn't work. It's just telling you that we do have a live binder link. So, In addition to that resources, we also have our website, Classroom 20 live.classroom20.com and we always direct you to the archives and resources page because you'll find everything you needed from the past show and please send your uh, colleagues and friends to us to uh, access the information because the recording for our full Blackboard Collaborate session will be there, an mp3 file, uh, embedded video file which you can take and share with your uh, colleagues in any place that will take an embed code, you'll find the chat log, which is really important. Things that go by very quickly today, um, you may lose sight of someone sharing something in the chat, and anything that gets shared in the chat is a resource that is complementary to our show. We will list on this blog page, as well as we'll move those links into the live binder. And the one thing I forgot to say is welcome back, everyone, because this is a, uh, the beginning of our show for the summer. We've been uh, a little busy uh, with our families, and we're glad to be back today. So we're just missing slides for a second here. I think, Kim, you're not using, you've got the follow me checked, and we're going back and forth here. So just give me a second to get back to our world map, because that's our next challenge, and I'm not getting it. Just give me a second. OK, our world map. So uh, let's go through it again. The left-hand side of the whiteboard are the whiteboard tools. If you Click on the second one down a little starburst and drag it across the screen. I'm in St. Catharines, Ontario in Canada. So that's me clicking on the screen. Give us privileges. Oh my gosh. There you go. Thank you. No, it's not just me. We're a little rusty today, folks. So if that's not working for you, please just you know give us a sense of it in the chat where you're located. Great, thank you very much for giving us your location in the world. Someone in Brazil, 
welcome. It is always nice to see the great cross-section that, that we have uh, during our sessions, cross-section of the world and the global audience, which is really great because it gives all a chance to uh, get different perspectives and sharing. So thank you for uh, doing that. And the next thing that I'm going to ask you to do is poll questions. And our first poll question today is, does your school allow cell phones to be used in the classroom? So now we have to go to the voting option just underneath your name. Choose A, yes, B, no, C, not sure. And Kim, if you wouldn't mind just giving the, collecting the votes for me, please, and posting them to the whiteboard when you're done. I think um, if people not had a chance to vote yet, but I think you can go ahead and uh, display the votes. Thank you. We're, our slides are having a bit of a, a jumble here. Go back to poll question. Nope, go poll question two now. So I'm not sure what happened to poll question one, although I de did see just by uh, in the chat that uh, we're pretty close on the yes and no option. So okay, question number two: Does your acceptable user policy allow for mobile devices? So I'm just going to clear the votes and give you a chance to start voting now, please. Yes, if um, you do, if your acceptable use policy allows you to use mobile devices, and no, if they don't. So I don't know what is going on with the slides today, so I apologize. No, it's OK. It's just like. I keep on saying, Peggy's not here. <laughs> Thank goodness Peggy's not here. She should be <clears throat> saying a few things in the background by this. But you know, I think the, the thing that we're volunteers has to come through clear sometimes. Uh, we're going to publish the results here. A few people are still having trouble figuring out how to make that. Uh, voting option work, but um, we've got a few people saying yes and a few people saying no, and then we've lost our slides again. <laughs> okay, let's just try poll question number three here. We'll get it in a second. There we go. Going to clear the votes. And when was the last time you read your? Uh, acceptable use policy when you were hired last school year, no clue, and you never signed a red one. So this is a bit more revealing. So A to D, please, folks, so you can get that happening. And Can't see the slide. All right, folks. We're just going to move right on then. I That's okay, let's Lorna, just try again. Just just click follow. It'll take right. It should take the slides right to where you are. I keep on losing my follow. I don't know what's going on with that. Usually that's usually what happens. But thanks, Timmy. I don't know what's that what's going on with them today. So, okay. Let's try introducing Kim. That part should be fairly easy to do. She's well known from um, many people here, not only during our, our sessions, but in uh, the uh, internet world because she is an educator and a technology specialist for the past 20 years. She graduated from the University of Texas in San Antonio where she lives and she has a Bachelor of Arts degree in elementary education back in 1989. She began her educational career teaching elementary grades and middle school math and in 2006 she achieved the pinnacle of educator certification and became a national board certified teacher in career and technical education with a specialty in technical 
education. In September 2010, Kim completed an advanced degree program at Western Governors University with a master's of education in uh, specializing in math. I know we are really excited to have you not only as our presenter but as our co-host today and I know you have a tremendous amount of information to share with us on cell phone. So I'm going to try to stop talking as quickly as possible and present you with our newbie question. What is an AUP? So the microphone is now yours, Kim. And I'm talking and I don't see Kim. <laughs> We may have lost her. So thank you, Lori. Kim has dropped off. And I in no way an expert in the subject today. So we're going to have to be extremely patient and ask her to come back. Well, great. Kim, she's still loading up there. I'm back. My, Good. My slides aren't all bad, but I'm back. But that's OK. <laughs> I think this is slide one for you, is it? It is. I will post uh, the slides on slide. Um, there's only a few that are missing. But I'll post them on slide share, and you can see the ones that are missing. It's not a big deal. Right. OK, but, Mike, stop um, for me. Yeah, it, it's not a big deal. So anyway, thank you for that introduction. And uh, if it can go wrong, it's going wrong. I'm not sure why um, I'm not able to change the slides. So I'll change them uh, the long way. Anyway, I want to talk, most people talk about the, um, the accessible use policy at the end of the session. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. Now, just to remind you that uh, to be anything that you do in your classroom, make certain that you don't violate it and that your students aren't violating it. And you may not have signed it um, except when you were hired. And just to think about these things as you go along. And hopefully, these will stimulate the conversation with your uh, campus personnel or district personnel and help modify some of your your um, AUPs to allow cell phones and mobile devices so that you can do some of these things. And some of these things you, uh, you can do with your community and parents and some of these things you can do with your cell phone um, and they don't involve students. But I just wanted to preface it with don't let um, your AUP and that you can't use cell phones not allow you to uh, to hinder you and not even allow you to think about some of these ideas in the classroom because some of them you can use with the browser. It just takes away some of the novelty. And be an advocate for your students. And when it's something that's really exciting and motivating and engaging for your students, say, I have this great idea. Um, we're going to need our cell phones, but I wanted to show it to you first and let you see the power of using cell phones in the classroom and get your opinion on it. And then we can talk about um, you know, using cell phones. So. I just wanted to uh, let you know about that. And in New York and some of the cities around New York, cell phones are so powerful and so important to students that they are going to storage trucks and bodegas that are near their schools that they are paying a, a dollar, sometimes three dollars a day to store their cell phones because they can't get past the lockers. So they are storing the cell phones in these um, at these places. And they are paying to store the cell phones. They check them in in the morning and they pick them up at the end of the day. And you know, in addition to the, the fee for the phone, maybe, and the monthly fee for the to use the phone, 
they're also paying the daily fee. The parents are, or the kids are paying the daily fee to store the phone. So it's really important to these kids to have their phones. Uh, and they don't want to wait till they get home. And sometimes the parents are paying it just for the safety of having the phone. Um, so it's really important to the students and to the parents that the kids have their phones with them. And they're making like $4 million off just storing the phones. And some of these mobile uh, storage bands, like off to the left here, you know, they've been robbed and they store, they steal all their phones. And then, you know, of course there's no insurance on these uh, places. So you're just left without a phone. So they are raking in big bucks. And so store, cell phones are huge money and of great importance to the students with these devices. So why bother with using cell phones in the classroom? Well, tools can really not not just jazz up your lessons, but they can motivate students. And those students who have tuned out, you can get them to now tune in into your lesson. And instead of doing something with paper and pencil, you can do the same thing with a cell phone or a web tool or a cell phone app. And it's now become the greatest thing since life spread. And students um, are really excited and engaged with content in a new and meaningful way just by using cell phones. And it's, um, they don't, sometimes they don't have a way to block the signals um, or they want to allow their teachers to have a cell phone for a safety reason. So they allow teachers to have them, but not students. So what does it look like using a cell phone in the classroom as a tool? Well, it could look like this, but uh, this slide usually says Tumblr on it. And Tumblr is uh, a blogging kind of uh, it's basically used for blogging, and you can upload blog posts, you can upload audio, video, and all kinds of things just by using an email address. So uh, the teacher can sign up for an account, and it's free. And then if you're out on a field trip, or you're out on a field experience, and you're measuring the quality of water, or the acidity, or something like that, and pe students can take pictures and upload and email those to the Tumblr email address. Those will be posted to your blog right away. And you, of course, you have final control over and moderation over what's posted. And then those are posted right to your Tumblr account. And Yahoo did buy Tumblr recently. And Tumblr has said that they, will, that they have promised not to mess up Tumblr. Because usually when something's bought, like when Microsoft bought Skype, they limited some of the free features. But um, Yahoo has, has promised not to mess up Skype since they bought it with one of the free services. So that's exciting that they're not going to take away some of the free features. And this is, it used to be Wafiti. And I kind of like you to do this with me. Um, what I'd like you to do is share with me one of your free cell phones, and then I will uh, go to this website um, using my browser and desktop sharing. And what I'd like you to do is you're going to text to the number eight. 7884, like you were dialing, sending a text message to that number. And you're going to start your text message at the message part at LOCA81751. And I'll leave that up for a bit. 
and then you're going to tell me what your favorite thing to do with the cell phone is. And you can um, do this later or you can do it now. Um, it's up to you. When you sign up for an edu uh, educator's account with Wafiti, which is now not Locomoda, Locomoda, um, you get the ability to be able for your students to respond anonymously and get feedback from your students, like, you know, how'd you do on your homework? Was that problem difficult for you? Those kinds of things. And just get some feedback. So if you start your message with, um, at L O C A eight one seven five one, then we'll see some of the responses of the favorite cell phone thing to do. And so I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, my browser with desktop sharing, and I've already got it loaded, so it's not going to take anything. Uh, Bismuth Silkworm says to check email. Iron Raven says to check Twitter update. And those are the two that have come in so far. It takes a few seconds, not that long. Um, but you can embed these, you can share these, you can share just the link, uh, uh, the link to the graffiti board. And you get, they give you this crazy name, anonymous name. But you can change that when you have the educator account, and you'll know who's who um, when you have if you're working with students. And you can post from the web or from your smartphone. And I had somebody I had my husband post, and they give you like a an animal or a color and so forth. But it's great. It, it gives you when you do it. Um, it takes a bit, but it does give you quick, um, immediate feedback on, you know, whatever question that you happen to ask. Okay, so let me go back. It's quick and easy to set it up, and you just text to that number, like a phone number, and you start out every message with at loca, and then this this code, this code is what drives and directs your message, and then you type that in, and you can go back at any time, and and you can moderate and check and make sure that your messages are. Um, appropriate and so forth. And this is an example of what it would look like. iPatio is a different uh, type of web tool. You can call in and create what they call phone casts. And what's great is you can post these phone casts to different blogging platforms. You can embed them. And these are great if you're studying a foreign language or any type of any subject. Um, you can even use it in math. Students can call in with the answer if you ask on your um, your original um, iPadio, like what's how do you solve for X? And you gave them like the a question in class, you know, a word problem or an equation. They can call in with a different phone cast with their explanation to solving the the word problem or an equation, or they can answer it in um, your the question that you pose in English. They can answer it in the language that you're studying, and you can post these on wikis and all kinds of things, newsletters. Um, so uh, your phone casts are great. And another similar tool is AudioBoo. Instead of a, a flog 
or phone cast is what they call them, you create a boo or an audio boo. The only thing I've noticed with the difference with an audio boo is if you have a free account, you you're limited to three minutes per boo. And but one thing you can do with audio boo, um, you which is similar to uh, iPadio, is you can follow each other's audio boo. And one big audio booer that I know of is Wes Fryer, and so he does lots of things with his children and uh, when he's out in the field and stuff and great educational things um, that he comes across that he thinks are great uh, that students and educators would really like to know about. So I, I really highly recommend that, if, um, that you follow him once you set up your audio boo account and it is free. So um, those are great resources just to record a short um, audio file that you're going to sh share. And you can access and record on many, many different devices, including obviously the cell phone. So um, these are great. It's Wes Fryer. Um, I don't know if he goes by W Fryer or Wes Fryer. Um, but you can check and see how he spells it um, on Audioboo. He does great things with it. I highly recommend it. And sorry that you, this is difficult to read, but we did a show on Evernote. But Evernote I use so, so much. And you can use it with um, web browsers. You can use it with all kinds of devices. You can store notes. You can search your notes by Keynote. Now that you um, have, there's an app called Pen Ultimate. You can handwrite your notes using a stylus or one of the uh, LiveScribe pens. And then you'll be able to convert it over into Evernote notes and search those handwritten notes also by keywords. There's, you get an Evernote email address, and so you can um, store pictures, documents, emails. Um, I, when I'm going to a conference, I put all of that into a note or into a notebook. And you can search very easily by keywords, by um, date, by all kinds of things. And it's really great to explore. They have what they call the trunk, so that you can add on different kinds of apps to really enhance the Evernote experience. And like their Shambo Guru, he has shared a folder um, that has some great information. And I created a Classroom 2.0 Live folder just to kind of see in the DIN notebook uh, that I take personal notes in and that I use for a variety of things. And all my sketch, um, what do you call those, screenshots. And it's really great. It's free. I couldn't highly, I couldn't recommend it any higher. Um, to, and it's so convenient um, to use. And you can use it on just about any device. And you can share notebooks with your students. You can share notebooks with your colleagues, colleagues, you can share notebooks with just your student, with just one student, and he can, the student can put in the assignment. You can grade it, get, put it, this assignment back in the notebook, and then the student can get it, and you can go back and forth with notes, um, uh, different assignments, um, and we've done uh, shows on it, so you can check our archives on using it more, but it's really a great product. And what's great is you can access all kinds of things from the, um, the and they said there was no uh, limitation on sharing in the free version. That was my understanding, and then I made sure I asked that question. I could be wrong um, now that they kind of changed things, and based on uh, and kind of are collaborating with LiveScribe, 
but at the time they said no you could share you could share with as many as you wanted in the free version uh dropbox is another great thing but they also have sugar sync they have box.com glide all kinds of things and they all do similar things uh, where you can save all of your files similar to Evernote and then you can share those individual files or the entire folder again you can upload download you can uh, share the folder with the class or you can share just one file uh, right now glide you can share that with Android right now um, you can share them with um, all types of devices. But right now, um, Glide is offering 50 gigs if you sign up. But they recently just added in, uh, they were just for Android, but now they're for all types of uh, devices, um, iOS devices as well. So I highly recommend you check that out if you need the, the space. I know my Dropbox fills up real fast. But you can check it out. They're all similar, and you just find one that fits your needs and, and fits the features that you're looking for. BuzzMob is an interesting app as well. Again, it's free, and it's for connecting with each other, and it's basically connecting via GPS. And it's great when you're going on a field trip or field experience activity where you're going to be spread out and like if you're going to um, a, a park or if you're going to you know um, an amusement park and it, it really also helps if somebody's at the zoo if you're going to be lost if a student gets lost and you can guide them into you as well and what you do is you create what they call um, a mob and then everybody kind of connects by their phone. They join the mob, and you can turn the mob on and off of when you you want them to uh, follow each other and to follow you because they can follow you, of course, and uh, when you want to follow them. And, of course, you don't want them following you around every single day, obviously. Um, and it's great, definitely, for chaperones. And as a teacher, you don't want them knowing when you're going to Target, when you're going to the doctor, of course, and those kinds of things. So you can turn it on and off, uh, which is great. And so I was exploring it one day because I was like, oh, I don't want them knowing where I'm going every day. How does this, how does this work? So I checked into it, and you can obviously turn your mobs on and off um, just for, you know, when you need the mob on and when you need the mob off, and when you want to add students and when you want to um, remove the students from the group. And you can change your mobs and change your groups around. Um, so it's a great activity to check into, and it's all based on your GPS and the way that you group your students. So that's something to check into. It's great if they're lost because um, they can call you, yes, but, you know, um, I'm terrible with directions. So if you tell me to go east, I don't know east anywhere. So if you tell me to head towards um, a certain thing, yeah, I can head that way. But if you tell me to head east, you know, 10 paces east and then turn let, well, I'm never going to get there. But if you tell me, you know, go straight a bit up until you see that tree and then head, you know, over to the left, yeah, I'll get there. But, you know, so that's one thing to think about, too, not only to keep track of your students, but also to keep track, yeah, your family is a great way. You know, it's a free way, cause a free way to keep track of your family because um, they pay, I don't know, some services charge five or ten bucks. But this way you could have your mob set up 
and you'll know where your mom is at all times. So that's just something to think about and explore. And another uh, web service that I really, really like is mentometer.com. It's a multiple choice polling option. Um, it gives you the immediate responses, and there's no limit of responses. And I also like that it generates a QR code for each of the polls that it generates. It is free, and there's no limit of polls. And it gen you can ask up to 200, uh, 200 people per poll, um, and there, there's no fee. You're not limited to just 35 or 40 people like you are with um, poll everywhere. So I would like you, if you'd like to participate with me, to respond to this question, do you use polling in your classroom with students? And the choices are A, yes, you do, B, no, not yet, C, what in the world is polling? And so to respond, you can either scan the code, the QR code, and then punch in 7938698. Or you can go directly to the web br browser on your phone or computer and go to vot.rs and punch in the code 793869. You don't need spaces. I just did it that way. Um, and it will take you directly to our poll. And I'm going to use um, app sharing and see if there are any responses to the following question. Posting this talk, resume sharing. The slides haven't been showing this all this time. I'm sorry if they haven't. No, they've been fine. OK, good. OK. Well, here's our polling question. And go back. Well, there was a polling question. That's okay. You just you set up your account. These are the questions. You can use a light or a black uh, background. There are a lot of things that you can do. You can export it, edit. And we have two people that do use polling um, and three people that are not yet. And you just, to distinguish it, you use this code over here, 793869. But it doesn't do like some of the quicker systems, like who's number one, who's number two, who's number three, and so forth. It doesn't do that yet. But it's a great way if you're just going to do generic polling you know, um, that you don't need the um, specific polling of who's who. If you if you needed that, then you would have to go to, uh, then you would have to go back to the, you would have to use one of those really expensive clicker systems. Okay. Now let me go back to the whiteboard. But you can also scan this QR code. I'll put the QR code anywhere. And people can respond to it in, in real time any at any time. So that's, that's another thing to think about. You could just give them the QR code. And they can snap that. And they don't have to punch anything in except the, the code. So Mentimeter is great free, easy to use. Then there's Selly. Selly um, is similar to uh, m many of the group texting um, apps that are out there. It works on any phone. doesn't have to be a smartphone. Nobody has to download anything. It's free. Students can take notes and send it to one another in the group. They can join different groups. Um, like one group 
that um, I created was Camp two thir uh, 2013, and I created this after the session. And it's secure. Nobody sees each anybody's phone number. And you join via a special code. So once it's set up, um, every, everybody's phone number is secure. And it's great. And you can also pull questions within the group. So um, th those are secure as well. There's also Remind 101, which is free. It's a group messaging as well. The phone numbers are also kept private. The people can't uh, communicate with one another in, in Remind 101. It's directly just from the teacher to the student. Um, so they can't communicate with each other. But they join a group um, by calling in a phone number. And I created a group after the uh, camp number. And basically, they, here's like a phone number. It has nothing to do with anybody's phone numbers. And then they, uh, whenever they want to uh, send a message, they put in this special code. And it, people have been using it for years, and they love it, and it, it's great. Um, and I like that it's secure. And one thing I noticed, um, I noticed a message from Remind 101, I may have mentioned it to this group as well. Um, on the day of the Super Bowl, I noticed that they said, oh, yeah, I'm sure your students are going to love that. So I was like, what are they talking about? So I went to go look and see some of the background. What the teacher had done was send out a test announcement reminder to his students through 101 saying, don't forget, tomorrow's a test. But he sent it during the Super Bowl. So I don't know how many students read it. But um, you know how students are glued to their cell phones, even during the Super Bowl. Um, and so he mentioned on Twitter that he sent a test announcement reminder using 101. And uh, Remind 101 saw it and said, oh, yeah, I'm sure your students are just going to love that announcement. And so I thought that exchange was kind of funny um, about how they were receiving test reminders during the Super Bowl. But anyway, um, it's a great service. If it fits your needs, um, I highly recommend it. It's free, and it works great, and it does protect your number, just like selling. Then there's Animoto. Uh, we've used Animotos in here quite a bit. And one thing I um, recommend that you consider doing with Animoto, instead of just uploading slides to Animoto um, and then having music, is uploading slides to like a math problem and having the students narrate their explanation of how they solved the problem and how or how they solved the equation or how they solved for x uh, or how they just why they think that this is the main idea of a certain paragraph and make it an educational thing as well as um, you know a tech a technology activity and you know you don't necessarily need the music they could use your activity your account and animals kind of gone up in um, you can get the free six month educator account um, or you can um, just, they can use your account. But that's just something to think about of another way of using Animoto. Um, if they're new to using Animoto technology, then great. I would go with the musical slideshow and just create the, um, the basic one. But yeah, you do need to re renew it every six months or you'll be charged 
or you'll be limited in the features that you use. And some people don't know that you can get the pro account for free. You just need to let them know that you're an educator. So be sure to let them know so that you get all of the features um, and for free and the pro account. Socrative, we've had a show on um, where somebody has really gone in depth on using Socrative. I like that you can use it on smartphones, tablets, and computers. You can create a variety of different activities, and but what's great is you can import and share those quizzes with other teachers on your campus. So if you can, if you're um, departmentalized, you can share those quizzes with one another. Um, or if you're in an elementary campus, you can share those quizzes so that um, other students can, because they're going to all, because you may all teach the same subject, um, even though you are, you have your own students. So I recommend that you share, I just think it's great that you can share those quizzes, and um, even if you don't share the same students. So that's something to think about using Socrative is running those and importing and sharing the quizzes in addition to all the great activities and the different things that you can do within Socrative. And if you haven't explored and used Socrative, I highly recommend it that you because you can use you can have multiple accounts. You can use there are so many and I just put just a brief amount of things that you can do that's just one tiny bit right there listed of the different things that you can do within Socrative. And the big one right there, the infused learning that, that's um, visible that you can't see is another assessment tool. But what's great about infused learning when you do check them out is they also do quizzes. But they're, you can submit open-ended answers where the students have to type text or they have to draw in and explain their answers or explain what, how they got X and, and how they solved a certain equation or how they got the, the slope and the rise over run of the, um, the X in that first quadrant. So there's a lot that you can do with Infused Learning. And again, it's all free. Um, infused Learning is very, very great to use, um, especially in the math science um, areas. It's got a lot, a lot of, of features that, that you can use. And I highly recommend that you check that out. Um, so it, it does do polls, but it's just more than a polling feature. It has um, a lot that the students can do. And it's great if you wanted to get some good feedback on your students as to where they are on certain objectives in math, science, English, reading, whatever content area you're working with, where they have to, uh, you can ask essay open-ended questions where they have to really respond and not just put an A, B, C, D answer. And VoiceThread, VoiceThread, uh, um, you can have a free personal account, but then there's an, uh, those are the prices for the, the educator account. I personally would just let them use my, uh, a personal account because they're kind of expensive. Um, but once you set up an account, I'm going to go ahead and show you one that um, that was created for that I created just for cell phones. And you won't be able to hear it, but that's okay. Um, you can respond to it because the, the link, I believe, is um, in the uh, live binder. But the, when the students want to comment, 
they can call in and use their phone to make to leave a comment. They can use their webcam. They can use the microphone just from their computer or the the web from the webcam, or they can simply type their response if they just wanted to to leave a simple um, uh, text response on each of the slides, and you just op upload the slides. And again, this is great where if you wanted to have them again explain a process along the way, they could upload their their different uh, steps along the way, and then they have to explain it along the way. Where nobody else has to comment, you can keep it that way if you wanted nobody else to comment, and they have to use their phone or their webcam and explain the process along the way. So that's uh, a different way of looking at it where you don't have people calling in to respond. You just have the student calling in to explain a process. So um, that's a, just kind of a different thing to do. Most allow voice threads to be used. Um, and very rarely have I heard that they haven't been able to use a voice thread on their devices in a in a school. And if you wanted to create like um, a fake Facebook page or a fake um, uh, iPhone, and you have the students find out what's wrong in this math equation explanation or what's wrong in this, uh, why is this not reasonable that uh, George uh, Washington would be uh, calling Martha on, the, on a cell phone. Um, you know, you could create a web page and it looks just like a Facebook page and they have these different conversations going back and forth and you could have them have to figure out why is this not reasonable? Why does this not make sense? Why why is this not um, accurate? You know, you could use these different Facebook things, and the students would have to determine what the errors are, or and so forth. So there's a bunch of different Facebook and fake creators that you could use to really enhance some of the things, and the students would have to work and figure out what's the what's the error or and you can really create in-depth conversations and the students could you know see oh that's why it's incorrect or they could create their own conversations using these different devices so that's something to think about as well in history or social studies and those kinds of things And QR codes, we're all familiar with them. One thing I want to recommend is uh, for the right one, um, that's for proprietary to Microsoft tags. And the left one uh, can be scanned with Enigma. And I recommend, highly recommend Enigma. Um, Enigma scans just about any, any, QR code, and if you have little ones, it's very easy for them to use Enigma because you don't have to have it very uh, exactly right on in the little um, scan area. And thank you, Shambles. And it's very easy to use if you have a very complicated QR code, very detailed. Um, they can use Enigma for that. And QR codes are on all kinds of things. You can use it as a book review that's been recorded and, and associated with a QR code. You can put it on your head. You can put it on to advertise. You can put it and link it to a YouTube video to explain how to solve a problem in an old math textbook. You can create a QR station 
in your classroom using a webcam if you don't have um, cell phones. The students can scan QR codes that way. Um, there's a variety of things in QRstuff.com. You can create a QR code very easily. Let me show you real quick. I know we're running out of time, but by the time I show you, we will be done. You just go to QR stuff. And with QR stuff, you can create all kinds of things down here on the left. But if you're just going to create one for a simple website, you just type in your website, pick your color along the spectrum. And then what I do is I just take a screenshot of it and then save it, and I'm done. And then my uh, my code is now associated with whatever website I typed in. And that's it. I've made a QR code. And it's as simple as that to make your QR code. Really, it really is. And you can make them all colors. So um, it's really, really become very simple and easy to make them. And I want to share with you um, a quote from William Arthur Ward that the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. And I want to hopefully have inspired you to try some of these ideas and take these ideas back to your administrators or IT department if you're not allowed to use some of these ideas so that you can um, maybe get some of these conversations going and be an advocate for your students so that you can use the devices in your classroom and really um, get some exciting, engaging lessons going in addition to the ones that you're already doing. And this is my contact information, even though you can't see it. But I'll go ahead and type it. This is my email address. This is my uh, web page is uh, kimcase.com. And basically, that is it. I'll go ahead and take questions after I close out the session. And we want to let you know that Steve Argadon will be talking with Ann Michelson about connected learners on August 20th. And he will be talking with David Marshak on August 27th and September 3rd, right after Labor Day. And if that isn't, like, yeah, it's a Tuesday right after Labor Day. Uh, he'll be talking with Michelle Cordy on hacking your classroom. That's going to be a very interesting session if you haven't heard of hacking your classroom. And Doug Johnson on the indispensable librarian. All of those are at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. And you can check out the futureofeducation.com if you have any questions and you want to keep up with what um, Steve Hargadon is doing. Um, we want to let you know that on August the 10th, we will be having a session next week with TeacherCast with Jeff Bradbury. We're working on our uh, August 17th session. And on August 24th, we will have our featured teacher session for August with Louise Morgan. That will be fantastic. And we always want to hear from you and hope that you nominate a featured teacher. And the link is in the live binder. But you can, at any time, you can go to tinyurl.com slash cr20live featured teacher, N-O-M-I-N-A-T. I know it's kind of long. But you can get that from our web page. Um, and then fill out and recommend yourself or any educator that works with other educators or students at any time. And we would love to get information and feedback on today's survey, as well as 
um, information on future topics in the survey. And if you would like a professional development certificate, you can also put that information in the uh, survey. Um, give us a few days since Peggy is traveling. She is the one that takes care of that. But any time that you watch um, one of the archives, you can use this link right here at the bottom, tinyurl.com slash cr20livesurvey. And you can request one of the surveys for that session that you watched. And you can either turn it in for hours if they're accepted in your district, or just print it out and let your students know that you continue your professional education. We also have an iTunes view that you can subscribe to the entire video or audio collection, or just individually. It's all free. There's no cost. This is the URL for our channel, and it is in the live binder. And we also have an RSS feed if you wanted to use an RSS aggregator to get the individual link. All of this information is free, and it can be sent through your um, RSS feed aggregator. And we want to <laughs> give a very special thanks to all of you and to Steve Hargadon and to Weebly for providing our website as well as Blackboard Collaborate for providing this platform for us to meet each and every week. And I know that was really, really quick, quick and I apologize. Um, look for the entire complete um, slide share on uh, slide deck on SlideShare later this week, uh, uh, later to uh, this afternoon or this weekend. Thank you so much, Wes. Um, I appreciate that. But if there are any questions, yes, I sure can, Stephanie. If there are any questions that you have, we would love for you to ask them. We can give you the mic, or you can just type them in the, the chat and uh, we will address your questions. And, oh, I went too far on the survey. Anytime you watch an archive or if you'd like today's, uh, a certificate for today's session, uh, once you exit today's session, a survey will automatically open in your browser for today. You don't have to do anything for um, the survey t today. It automatically opens for you. But if you are um, not in a session, the survey will automatically open. And um, let me rephrase that. In today's session, once you exit today, the browser will automatically open. But if you're not in a uh, session, you can type in this link right here, tinyurl.com slash cr20livesurvey. But for today, it will automatically open for you, and you just put your name and address in the area that asks if you would like a certificate, um, professional development certificate. So, um, Q, if Q, there can I just jump in for a second about people requesting yes. their uh, surveys? I know one of the things that Peggy has asked, she faithfully sends them out. Can you not use your institutional email address? Because sometimes the uh, spam filters will just pop it back and we can't get it to you. So if you do have a private Gmail account, it works much better for us to get to, to facilitate the sending of those uh, certificates out. So uh, I think Tammy must have found a few questions. If you want to go back to Tammy. Yes, Lori and Tammy or... Um, yeah, sorry, I met Lori. I apologize. Yeah, Lori, could you, uh, if you have questions, I would love, and then I'll take Wes's. Okay, I was going to read Wes's first, but it, I'll go back to okay. the top of my list. Um, early on, someone said something. My concern with cell phones is students who cannot afford one. Such students only have basic service, and I guess that would be with any any technology. Um, why don't students just block cell phone signals during the day? Schools usually have phones for emergencies. 
Well, like schools up in New York and stuff, um, they have metal detectors that that the cell phones can't get past, which mm. is why they leave them with the metal uh, bodegas and those carts. Mm-hmm. Those what do you call them? those vans out front? Um, yes, a lot of and so they're not legally allowed to jam the the signals for safety reasons. Um, mm-hmm. So they can't technically do that. Um, so that's why they go that route. Uh, a different application, the Mentimeter for the uh, polling, uh, it can that be used on computers too, besides the phones? Yes, it sure can. You can go to vot.rs in your browser and put in that code, and you can mm-hmm. respond to the poll using your browser on your computer if you don't have a cell phone. So there are a lot of ways that you can respond to these things, even if you don't have a cell phone. May not be as exciting, Good. but there are still ways to right. get around it. Good. Uh, with the Socrative service, and if you wanted to run multiple synchronous quizzes, you would need multiple accounts, right? Or are there other workarounds for that? Uh, my understanding was whenever you assign the student, the student has an account and you just tell the student which account and which quiz to take when I was looking at it last um, because mm-hmm. that student can take a multiple choice quiz while another student can be taking a true false quiz. Hmm. The whole student didn't, the whole class doesn't have to take um, the same quiz at the same time. Was my that was my last okay. um, understanding? Okay. And to voice thread, aren't there limited free minutes for phoning per student? If they're phoning in to comment, I thought it was a, a few. I thought that it was a limitation per slide, um, so that yeah, you can buy more. Um, most just use the web, um, their webcam microphone or their computer mm-hmm. microphone um, if they run out of minutes or they use somebody else's cell phone that um, for an account that expired um, if they have individual accounts. But Okay. I thought it was per slide so that usually the um, you could get around the limitation that it wouldn't yes. take up that many minutes per slide. And with a district level account with VoiceThread that probably also gets rid of individual limits. Yes, whole, I believe so. Whole district you can, can uh, have a, a VoiceThread account. Yes, because last time I worked with an education account, we didn't have any limitation on minutes. Mm-hmm. And those were my questions that I captured, except for Wes's question about um, the QR oh, right, codes, okay. AR apps instead of QR codes. OK. And Wes mentioned about using Erasma as um, a QR creator, and I'm really excited to explore that, but I haven't done that much. But that is looks really, really cool, um, where you can use Erasma to create a QR code out of any shape, any image, and um, that's that's my next um, that's my next uh, thing when I find time with. I think that's going to be exciting to use.
I know Steve Zimbo's real big on our asthma right now, and I think um, that's going to be the next thing in education is using our asthma to create all kinds of QR codes with our, what they call our asthma. And any other questions? Before we close out the day? While we're waiting for questions, Kim, I just wanted to bring up a discussion that Susie mentioned that some of the recordings were not uh, available anymore. And it's because Blip felt that we didn't fit their business model, so we no longer have a blip account, so all our videos were hosted on their site, and uh, luckily, uh, Kim and Peggy have most of them, and we are now slowly but surely trying to put them back up onto YouTube so they'll be available again. It's been of a, a kind of a, a blow to us to have to put uh, the hours back, That, uh, but it's nice to hear, Susie, that you appreciate it, so we will keep uh, uh, chipping away and getting the content back up again. So that's my conversation for today, and I think we're close to ending the session, Kim. Yes, we're working on transferring those over to our YouTube channel. It's a slow process, but we are working on it. Um, and we want to thank everybody for joining us today. And yes. Yes. Well, I'm not sure what you call the um, our asthma codes. Yeah, the AR code. Because you have to label the your kind of like coordinates on the image that you're going to use to create the uh, AR code. But it's really exciting what our asthma can do, and um, I think that's going to be the, um, the next big thing in education, technology-wise. Yeah, the markers. Thank you. Geotagging, yes. Yes, when I was at ISTE, I saw um, Adam, of course, Adam Bello had his Google Glasses, and somebody else did when I was in the vendor hall um, next to my husband's vendor booth. Um, somebody else had some Google Glasses, too. So there's a lot ahead, um, a lot of creativity. You know, if you want to talk about Common Core Standard, I think there's a lot of creativity and a lot of uh, um, things going to be going along the creative route versus the, um, from what we've seen in the past. So thank you, everybody, for joining today. I'm so appreciative. Sorry about all of the technical difficulties we had. Um, take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll get the recordings up um, sometime later this weekend.